there are any number of ways to analyze an urban environment. One can study its timeline, its inherent functions, its typology, morphology, the use of demographic mobility patterns, the list goes on. Basically, conducting an analysis is deciphering gathered information in the form of maps or photographs or a written report, which means that we can analyze any urban environment without actually being there. However, when we are immersed in an urban environment, we find ourselves making experiential analysis, gathering information through our senses firsthand as inhabitants or users of that urban space. Around the globe, urban environments have evolved at different rates. Today we are going to analyze the small Peruvian city of Ilo, a city whose morphological identity has evolved rapidly over the last century. In particular, we are going to have a look at the role of the seafront during its evolution. Cuando era garoto, mi padre no trabajó. Nunca había visto el mar antes, no cultivadas las montañas. No vimos de alto agua a de mar, derrita para viejo. The north of Ilo is marked by the mouth of the fertile rio Ismor. There is evidence here of nomadic hunters as early as 8600 BC. The Rio Ismore has played host to a string of settlements over time, but let's fast forward to the days of the Spanish Empire. We find the relocation of a settlement during the late 19th century to higher ground as a result of tidal flooding. Following the rule of the Indies, the Spaniards laid out their settlement using a strategically oriented plaza to generate an urban grid. But more interestingly is the proximity of the plaza to the seafront, and its adjacency to Customs Wharf, the Spaniards' gateway to the outside world. Eh, estaba trabajando en un navio marchante que bello cobre el peter de hilo. Costaría de ir para, para comprar precios de un vino. O estaba comprando pix de pescado y discuera el remote bonito. Y cuide el peter mi falta un chat. Nos sentimos y convocemos me cuetinos más que en inglés. So we've established that Ilo is a port city, a monoconcentric urban settlement that can be traced back to its wharf. Lynch describes the urban space in quantitative terms, nodes, landmarks, paths, edges, and districts. Ilo seafront is indeed an edge, a naturally occurring edge which holds a deep-rooted purpose in Ilo's history. During the first half of the 20th century, the South American trade coast utilized Ilo's port and its small agricultural and fishing industry. However, in 1960, this seaside town became home to a $100 million copper foundry, funded by the mining giant Southern Peru Copper Corporation. Ilo's population grew rapidly from 4 or 5,000 in the late 50s to tens of thousands in a matter of decades. With the sudden increase in mining jobs also came the sudden boom in the fishing industry. These two industries relied heavily, of course, on their access to the ocean, the seafront, as utility. My father was passing when he had ideas sufficient to work in my house. He was going to go to my friends to go to the Vasco. He was a good man, 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 he was a good man. Buena vista a Ilo, o venido capitán de medio vista. Esta Siria nos ha tenido vista a Ilo como si nacido toda una nueva ropa que nos lleva. O era joven en un campo o pelú para el barco. Cuando el diseño de Pacasto era real y se metía. Y para dar casa, nos íbamos a ser felices. Since the days of the crowded mining and fishing came back in the 60s, Ilo has matured into a developing city. During the 80s and 90s, the western world's urban metropolises were being shaped by postmodernist ideals, which, in the words of Chambers, were people's diverse histories that are daily mixed, recycled and scratched together on a giant screen that is the contemporary city. In support of these ideals, Jane Jacobs suggests that we should both respect and provide for spontaneous self-diversification amongst urban populations, in the formation of our policies and plans. During this period, however, Ilo's diverse ethnic population was being united by a struggle against toxic pollution spewing from the copper foundry. It was a crazy time. 
there were socialist unions forming which had the potential to create civil unrest. Fortunately, struggle and hardship united the Iloians, leading to the election of the municipal government to represent. In 1991, the first mayor of Ilo was elected, Julio Diaz Palacios, who coined the slogan, From Protest to Proposal. With the consistent pressure from residents, a multi-sectoral environmental inquiry was commissioned. The pollution levels were at some places 14 times the limit of sulfur dioxide suggested by the World Health Organization. The Commission's conclusions and recommendations were agreed to by the Southern Peru Copper Corporation, and they have since reduced their pollution levels. <coughs> I'm in Ilo, I'm on a South American cruise, and when we came to shore yesterday, I was completely surprised to see Ilo looking so clean and modern. I was expecting to find a dirty port town because my mother had told me not to get off the ship at Ilo because of my asthma and that pollution would set it off. See, my mother used to live here, and her mother moved her away from Ilo because she had asthma. She says it was from the cop factory. <laughs> Doca se cae metro. Un día, el chico me dice cuál estaba. Haz potasa. Postria a Jeziano. Y lo administra en el negocio. Por muchos años, trabaja en el Junto Amara. Menos a Bebe y a Mambara Amara. I arrived in Ilo in 1987. I was invited here to help facilitate the community consultation that was required to execute the master plan strategies developed in the early to mid 80s. The master plan entailed many infrastructural projects, including paving the streets, creating parks, building the stairways, water supply, and sanitation works. The people of Ilo were by far the greatest driving force during this period. In no other community I have worked with, has the spirit of the people been so united to achieve urban development that ultimately improves their quality of life. The project that best captures this spirit is the boulevard of the Villa del Mar. Phenomenologically, we can describe Villa del Mar's waterfront in terms of space and character. Initially, we see the waterfront as privatized internal space and characterized by industrial type activity. Vivimos juntos con la familia de pecados mutuos en uh, el santo de Baracue. Pudimos ver pecados en barrocos de pesca y cringas. Estaban siempre rindo, brigando con meseros. Un día un gobierno más nipuso nos dio un mes para mundo en nuestra salud. Pero hay un momento mucho difícil, mucho triste para tal. By far, my hardest task has been to present relocation orders to the residents and industries along the seafront of Villa de Mar. The master plan allowed for a public boulevard, a public connection with the sea. This was equally for the residents' benefit as it was for the tourist image of Ilo. Le llegó a Tara, Teratolmo nos dice que tenemos que mover de nos no gorioso. Cuando volte para casa, mi esposo es que volverá a ti la semana. Juntamente con todas las pocasiones a sus familias, viviendo en las montañas, que trabajan en una mano, de otro en el sentido. The battle to eradicate Ilo's stigma as a dirty, polluted city relies heavily on its image as a port city, a seaside holiday destination. Having a town Iloans could be proud of was a drawcard in the process of relocating more than a dozen settlements where the new boulevard lies today. After the boulevard development, we find that qualitative spatial aspects of the seafront have polarized to become a public landscape catering to the social needs of a growing community. In essence, we see the re-establishment of a genius loci, Ilo's waterfront celebrated as phenomenological identity. There's this great boulevard. Our guide told us that 20 years ago where we are standing was the old brick factory. And over there was the police barracks, and beyond that was a fishing village, and 
other stuff that all got like torn down to make way for this great boulevard. It's great. It's progress, I guess. Like one day they might even get a McDonald's. In morphological terms, Konzen notes that there are three aspects of physical fabric viewed as townscape. One, the provision of physical orientation via identity of locality. Two, orientation of time via visual experience of historic reference. And three, townscape aesthetic made up of dominant features and unique details. Ilo's waterfront plays an important part in this urban fabric, answering to all three of Konzen's quantitative aspects. In the demos of no so local the little de Bicata, has said us in Ra de Nosa. When we visit a foreign city, we are usually struck by its particular character, which becomes the important experience. The phenomenology of Ilo's evolved seafront character has switched from productive to passive, industrial to leisurable. Agora elevo meus nestos para Evandia. E ligo do disto onde nós vivemos. E agora nós trabalhamos. Esta ribrianca onde por aco enquanto e sento a quase ele me beijo com bom. Que vive rebama.